Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan for Lawn Fawn and in today's video I'm going to be creating this card using the Heart Garden Stencil. Here's a look at some of the supplies that I pulled in to use for the card. I plan on using an image from the Happy Hugs stamp set, some clouds from All the Clouds, I have the Secret Garden Window, and the Fancy Scalloped Rectangles Stackables, and then also the Small Stitched Rectangle Stackables. I have the Heart Pouch, and the heart garden stencil. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create my background with that heart garden stencil. I have some white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half that I'm just adhering down to my work surface with some post-it tape rolled up on the back. Then I'm going to align the grass about a third of the way up from the bottom of my card. And I'm going to hold the stencil down using this really cute, I think this is the uh, fruit salad washi tape. I like to use it to hold my stencils down. I'm also going to use some posted tape to just kind of mask off the area above and below in case I get a little carried away with my ink blending. So I want this to be a multicolored grassy area. So I want to have a lighter and a darker area, which you can do with just one shade of ink, but I'm going to use two. So I started out with a celery stick ink blended on that lighter color. And then I'm bringing in the jalapeno ink, both from Lawn Fawn, and I'm taking these little mini blending brushes, and I'm going to add that down towards the bottom of my grassy hill, kind of blend it up so it fades off a little bit, but I still really want to keep that light area, so it kind of gives me that highlight on my grass. Then I can remove my post-it tape and my washi tape so that I can take the stencil and shift it down. So really what I'm focusing on right here are the three stems in the middle. Once I feel like I have them centered, I'm gonna hold that stencil down once again with the washi tape and then mask off the areas around it. Now for my stems, I'm just going to use that same jalapeno ink. Since that darker color is mainly towards the bottom of my hill, I felt like I could bring that in to use for my stems. Once again, I'm using these mini blending brushes to help kind of control my ink blending so it doesn't go all over the place. And it's just really good for these small areas. Now I'm going to work on the stem that is over on that left hand side. I just shifted my stencil. I'm going to quickly ink blend it on again with the jalapeno ink, but just going a little lighter handed. So I kind of wanted to give this look that there are some stems in the front and some in the back. I shifted the stencil and I'm going to add that stem that is over on the right hand side. Now, once I actually put my window over the top, I'm probably not gonna see a lot of these, but I thought it really helped fill in the scene. Now that my stems are done, I can bring the stencil back in, and I'm not cleaning my stencil in between each of these. I'm just leaving it as is, because I keep shifting the stencil, so I'm not worried about contaminating or picking up any of that excess ink. Now for the hearts, I decided to go with a purple theme. I know red is always, or pink is pretty common, but I thought I'd change it up a little bit and use purple. So to start off with, I am using fresh lavender. So this is going to be just a really nice light pastel purple. I left the stencil in place and I'm going to bring in a darker shade of purple. So this is going to be grape jelly. So not only is this darker, but it also uh, just adds a little contrast and dimension to my heart. So it's going to give that darker and also a shaded look to the hearts. I'm really focusing on uh, putting that ink just towards the bottom of the hearts. And I'm using that mini blending brush again because I don't want this to kind of overtake my lighter color. Again, I've shifted my stencil, came in with that lighter color, so the fresh lavender, added a little bit of the grape jelly, and then I'll shift the stencil and do the left-hand side as well. I love how everything is included on this one stencil, so it's very easy to change up your colors if you want to have a rainbow of heart kind of flowers here. It's really easy to do that. So now once everything is all blended, I have the background done here. I'm going to set this off on the side and I'm going to work on the stamping and coloring portion of my card. The images I'm going to use are the clouds from all the clouds stamp set and then these two little mice hugging which is from the happy hugs stamp set. I picked the mice because for one, they're super cute. And two, they were small enough that they would fit in my scene without taking over and hiding the garden that's gonna be in the back. 
So I stamped these down twice using the Jet Black ink from Lawn Fawn, which is alcohol marker friendly. And I am using a piece of Express It cardstock, which is a super smooth cardstock, but you can use whatever cardstock you like to use for your alcohol marker coloring. The markers that I'm going to use today are my tri-blend markers. Here's a quick look at the colors that I picked out. It's just four markers, but there is a variety of colors in just one marker. So the blends that I'm using is the gold brown, the gold brown extend, the green turquoise, and the pale pink extend. I like to dig my tri-blends out every now and then for coloring because it is really quick and easy to do when I have all three colors that I need on one marker. Now sometimes uh, there's too much of a jump between the colors and that is where I will bring in the extends. So one of the shades on the other marker will help fill it in. So my mice I'm doing with a light brown. I put the shadow area on the right hand side for the mouse that's more in the front. And then I put the shadow area or the darkest area of my marker on the left hand side for the mouse that's kind of tucked in the back. All you really see is his head peeking through. Then for the clouds, I am just going to take the lightest color on that green turquoise marker and I'm just going to outline the inside of the cloud and then I'll take the shade darker and just add a few little dots kind of to give it a little bit of texture and fluff. I'll line up the coordinating die for each of them, hold them down with post-it tape and die cut those out. When I'm die cutting, I also had some extra space there where I die cut out another layer of each of them to glue it together and add support because Expressive cardstock is not super heavy. So I like to add an additional layer behind it and I don't feel like I'm wasting paper when I only kind of stamped on the bottom half of that. So not only is this giving my images some support, but it's going to add a little bit of dimension. To start creating my scene, I have my background here with that garden, and then I'm going to bring in the secret garden window. Now, really all I want from that is this arch because I am absolutely in love with the arch shape. So I have another piece of white cardstock. This is the 80 pound white cardstock that's trimmed to four and a quarter by five and a half, and I die cut out my frame from that. So I try to get an idea about where my garden is going to be in the background, and that's how I position the arch. I also took some of the purple textured canvas cardstock and I cut out the fancy scalloped rectangles from that. There are some little bits that I need to poke out, so I just used my craft pick to do that. And I wanted to trim my framed piece out just a little bit so it fit inside of that uh, fancy scalloped rectangle I did. So I lined up one of these small stitched rectangles over my die cut arch and die cut that out. What I really like about this is all of them have these little stitched lines. I'm also going to take that same size die and die cut out my little garden here because I wanted that to layer behind everything nicely. I thought I had it lined up pretty good, but I think I die cut it out just a little bit crooked, so I will have to fix that. And you can see how this fits so perfect on the front of those fancy scalloped rectangle that I die cut from that purple textured canvas cardstock. So off screen, I did a little bit of die cutting and arranging on the front of the card. I took these textured dots in the bright color pack. It's got this really nice shade of purple and it's going to match my card great. So I die cut out that XOXO, which is off of the heart pouch die. I'm not sure if I mentioned it before. And it also has this bow. So I die cut both of those from those dots uh, pattern paper or that dots paper pack. I used the end of a paintbrush to help roll my bow and then I'm placing a little glue in the inside of it to kind of start holding my bow together. So I kind of fiddle with it and then once I have these centers meeting in the middle, I just use my reverse tweezers to clasp over that and then I set it off on the side to dry. Now when I did the XOXO, I started with like a silver glitter cardstock, decided that was almost too shiny and shimmery for more of this soft whimsical card that I was creating. So I'm going to use that textured paper with the polka dots and I die cut it also multiple times from white cardstock and layered those two together. Now that XOXO also has a shadow layer, but I decided not to use that. I'm just gonna use the letters. So here I'm just finishing up that bow. I'm kind of taking that middle piece and wrapping it around, adding some more glue to the center and then holding that closed with a set of tweezers. While my bow is drying, I'm going to start building my scene a little bit. I started by placing my clouds about where they're going to be in my window. So I had them lined up just where they're going to be kind of peeking in. 
I also have a smaller sentiment there that I want to stamp. So I'm going to bring this all over to my Misty and kind of hold that down with my magnet, use that window as a guide so I know about where I'm going to stamp that smaller sentiment. Now, one thing I really like to do with these skinny sentiments like this is bring in my Misty rulers and I just kind of push it up a little bit till everything catches and it's going to help align my sentiment up straight. Now, it's up to me to make sure that it is centered, but at least it'll be straight. So I will pick that up at the door of the Misty, remove my ruler and make sure that I'm tucked up in that top left hand corner. And then I'm going to ink up this small sentiment using the black licorice ink. I will stamp that down twice to make sure I have a really nice impression. And then I'm going to take my window with the arch and I'm going to line the back of that with some foam tape. I just trim into some thin strips to add around the edges. Then I will peel back the backing of the foam tape and I'm going to line this up over my background. Now I did notice that I didn't trim my background just right. So I had to kind of adjust my frame and maneuver it a little bit. So it's going to go a little higher up than I planned. And then what I'll do is once I secure that down, I'm going to trim off any of the excess. When I had trimmed that back panel, the, the bottom of the grass was showing and I didn't want that showing through my window. So that's why I had to make that little adjustment. I still want to add a little bit more dimension to this. So I'm lining the back of that panel with some more of that foam tape. It's not too bulky at this point, so it's going to go through the mail nicely. I might need some extra postage though. Then I can add in the additional sentiment, the XOXO. I kind of lined it up and spread it out. So I think I, I don't think I lined up my stamped sentiment perfectly. So I'm hoping that I'm distracting you or distracting your eye with the XOXO. I'm going to try and space that out so it looks centered, but I was off just a little bit. So I'm just using a little bit of the liquid glue and my tweezers to secure that down. And then I have my bow. So I added the bow to the center of the tails. And then I'm going to add that right at the tippy top. I debated about if I should put that in the scene, but I really do like kind of how it finishes off or kind of goes right at the top of my arch. I thought that was just a simple and cute touch. And then I can bring in my cute little mice. So I did add some thin foam squares behind them. I'll remove the backing of the foam squares and I'm going to add that about center ish. Uh, I struggled with placement actually a little bit on the mice, but I think it's just a really simple and cute layout for them and they're hugging. So I miss your hugs. I just love how it all ties together really well. I'm going to add some highlights with a white jelly roll pen. I think this is a 10 point. I'm adding them to the leaves of my heart flowers. And at the end, I'm also going to add a couple highlights to the top of my hill. And then I'm going to add a little bit of sparkle to my XOXO with the sparkle glaze pen. And this will be really nice and shiny and have that little bit of sparkle to the front. And then in my finished pictures, you're going to see how I added that to a white side folding card base. And it's going to show that white around the purple scalloped edge really nicely. And that finishes up my card project. I hope you enjoyed today's card. Thank you so much for joining me. 